in a continuing effort to assist the mining community with the implementation of the final phase of the diesel regulations, this video has been developed to provide assistance to mine operators, diesel equipment manufacturers, and vendors. As of November 25, 1999, there will be new requirements for the approval of diesel engines and other components used in underground coal mines. These will cover Section 75, 1909, 1910, and 1911 of the Code of Federal Regulation. These specific sections address out-by, non-permissible equipment used in underground coal mines. The specific design or how the machine is built is at the discretion of the mine operator, as long as it achieves the performance required by the regulations. What provides acceptable performance on one machine may not work on another. Also, we're not going to cover all the paragraphs of the rule, but we are going to cover those requirements that have raised the most questions. I want to emphasize again that these regulations are primarily performance standards, and they will be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis by the local inspector. The following scenes are of a lube truck undergoing modifications to meet the new diesel regulations. Here we have a Gatman lube truck. It's classified heavy duty because of its use throughout the coal mine. It will be required, as all diesel powered equipment, to have an approved engine. The approved engine will also have to have an air filter that is sized in accordance with the engine manufacturer. The air filter is also required to have a service indicator set in accordance with the manufacturer. Here, the service indicator is missing. Each diesel-powered machine will be required to have at least one 10A60BC fire extinguisher. This lube truck is required to have at least two extinguishers. At least one extinguisher must be located in easy reach of the operator. It must also be protected from damage. Here, this fire extinguisher needs additional guarding. The fuel tank must be substantially constructed and protected against damage by collision. It must have a vent opening that maintains atmospheric pressure in the fuel tank and that is designed to prevent fuel from splashing out of the vent opening. A self-closing fuel cap on the fuel tank must be used. The fuel tank filler and vent must be located so that leaks or spillage during refilling do not contact hot surfaces. Although not installed here, all fuel tanks need fire suppression coverage and, if automatic, fire detection. This lube truck does not have a manual shutoff valve. The manual shutoff valve must be installed in the fuel system as close as practicable to the tank. Fuel line piping must either be steel wire reinforced or synthetic elastomer that is suitable for diesel fuel and that has been tested and de determined to be fire resistant by the manufacturer. Fuel line piping must be clamped. Primary fuel lines must be located so that fuel leaks do not contact hot surfaces. The protective covering on these hoses must be extended to cover the fittings. Additional clamping would be required further back to prevent movement and to locate the fuel line further from the hot exhaust pipe. Although covered with a fire resistant sleeve, contact with the hot exhaust could have a serious effect. Here we see the primary fuel lines located on the fuel filter and fuel pump. Above these, we see the OEM metal fuel lines. Although not required to have additional guarding, they must be maintained to prevent fuel leaks. It's important that fuel lines be separated from the electrical wiring and protected from damage in ordinary use. Electrical wiring must have adequate mechanical protection to prevent damage to the cable. Adequate guarding to protect fuel, hydraulic, and electric lines when such lines pass near rotating parts, such as belts. 
Another rotating part is the dry shaft. Should shaft failure occur, fuel lines, hydraulic lines, and electrical wiring could be damaged. Therefore, additional guarding is needed. The regulation is meant to prevent the spray from ruptured hydraulic and lubricating oil lines from being ignited by contact with engine exhaust system component surfaces, such as the exhaust manifold and the exhaust pipe. Due to the inadequate size of this deflection shield, diesel fuel could come in contact with the hot exhaust manifold or exhaust pipe. Additional protection such as ceramic coating or a jacket on the exhaust manifold and exhaust pipe or flame resistant sleeves or conduit on the hydraulic hoses should be used. The new regulation will require each ungrounded conductor to have insulation compatible with the impressed voltage. The insulation materials must be resistant to deterioration from engine heat and oil. The ungrounded positive lead on this solenoid needs additional insulation. All wiring must have adequate mechanical protection to prevent damage to the cable that might result in short circuits. In addition to mechanical protection, wiring must be separated from sharp edges and corners where there is a possibility of damaging the wires and cables. In this case, the fuel linkage could eventually cause damage to the wiring. This lube truck is being fitted with a fire suppression system. The new rule requires a multi-purpose dry chemical type ABC fire suppression system that's listed or approved. Fire suppression in this area must cover the engine, the starter, the transmission, and hydraulic pumps and tanks. Fire suppression for other areas of this vehicle include fuel tanks, exposed brake units, air compressors, and battery areas. Discharge nozzles shall be positioned and aimed for maximum fire suppression effectiveness. To achieve this, it is highly recommended that a fire risk analysis be done on each vehicle to determine the optimum design and location of each system to provide the necessary coverage. This fire suppression actuator needs additional protection. Also, the tubing or piping must be secured and protected against damage, including pinching, crimping, stretching, abrasion, and corrosion. Fire suppression nozzles must also be protected against the entrance of foreign materials such as mud, coal dust, or rock dust. Reflectors or warning lights mounted on the equipment which can be readily seen in all directions is also a new requirement. This reflector is broken and will need to be replaced. As we move to the battery compartment, this currently installed circuit interrupting device is improperly installed for two reasons. First, it is installed in the negative lead of the battery and secondly, it is not located as close as practicable to the battery. The battery terminals need proper insulation. Additionally, the battery cables need adequate mechanical protection. The fill caps must be in place and secured to prevent electrolytes from splashing out of the battery. The battery box must be of sturdy construction and all batteries must be secured to prevent movement and must be protected from external damage by position. It is important to remember that the dry chemical canister must be installed in a protected location or guarded to minimize physical damage from routine vehicle operations. Hydraulic tanks, fillers, vents, and lines must be located to prevent spillage or leaks from contacting hot surfaces. 30 CFR 75-1710 has been modified to include diesel-powered equipment. As mentioned, no two machine designs are identical. The hydraulic hoses and power wires on this machine have been relocated from the area of the dry shaft to the area above the articulation point.
The repositioned hydraulic hoses and the electrical cables are passing through a hole which is too small, causing a pinch point. The opening needs to be enlarged and additional guarding installed on the sharp edges. Because this machine pivots, once the engine is shut down, there should be no articulation. The manual actuator for the fire suppression system must be located within the operator's reach. The regulations now require an audible warning device located near the equipment operator. All machines are now required to have a neutral start feature and four machines with steering wheels, brake pedals and accelerator pedals should be of automobile orientation. The supplemental parking brake system must be automatic, complete, independent, capable of being applied without shutting down the engine and utilize either pressure or a declutch mechanism on the transmission before the equipment can be trammed. This brake system must be applied when the equipment operator is not at the controls. This control box is part of the fire suppression system that provides automatic engine shutdown. Here is the automatic fire suppression system control box. It is independently powered and contains status system indicators. It must be properly maintained and a record kept. Service brakes must act on each wheel and must not result in complete loss of braking capability. All circuits between the battery and the charging generator must be protected against short circuit by fuses or other automatic circuit interrupting devices. Because this is a lube truck, onboard compressors need fire suppression coverage. Also, because this vehicle transports lubricating oils, grease, and diesel fuel, we need to discuss the basic regulations which pertain to diesel fuel transportation units, which include the unit must be clearly marked diesel fuel. It must have a 500 gallon limit. The tank must be permanently fixed and must have at least two multi-purpose dry chemical fire extinguishers that are 10A60 BC or higher rated. Diesel fuel tanks must not leak. Wall thickness must be a minimum of 3 sixteenths of an inch. It must be protected against corrosion and be of seamless construction or liquid tight welded seams. Tanks must also have devices for emergency venting of at least four inches or greater diameter. Although not equipped on this vehicle, a self-closing cap must be used. Vents to permit free discharge of fuel are required. This design requires this valve to be opened when dispensing fuel. The tank itself must be protected from damage by collision and it must have a fuel shutoff valve. One problem that could exist on all diesel powered vehicles is the accumulation of diesel fuels and combustibles. These conditions must be cleaned. Lights must be maintained on both ends. Also, equipment normally operated in both directions must be equipped with headlights for both directions. Fuel that is dispensed by gravity must have a hose with a nozzle that has a self-closing valve and a no latch open device. Powered pump units also need an anti-siphoning device. As mentioned earlier, the design of diesel powered equipment varies. Therefore, it is necessary to evaluate each machine for overall compliance. We hope this video has provided you with the guidance needed to comply with the regulations. Remember, we have not covered all the regulations, but we hope we have discussed most areas of concern. Upon request, MSHA will continue to assist with the evaluation of diesel powered equipment. We will continue to keep you updated through MSHA's homepage at www.msha.gov. Thank mm -hmm. you.